Samuel, known as the Poison of God, who in the beginning of time was located next to the throne of God alongside the six most powerful archangels of the heavens, with Samuel being the seventh archangel defender. The archangel Samuel is considered by many as a good angel, while for many others he is a heartless and evil angel, however, the truth is that this angel is neither good nor evil, but rather a righteous angel. Samuel is described as that angel who does his work regardless of the title that a man or a divinity possessed. It is said that this imposing angel revolutionized the heavens, being branded as a selfish archangel, the grim archangel who snatched human life without hesitation. Hence, he is known as the angel of death, it is said that Samuel was the one sent by God to finish those who do not repent of their sins, and for Samuel to snatch the breath of life was quite a difficult job, but it was necessary to deliver judgment for the good of humanity. It is said that God gave the order to annihilate the sinners, and that Samuel, obedient to the divine orders, would plan the hour of death for the ungodly. Thus, Samuel appeared before the doomed and sinful souls as a frivolous being, carrying a long and sharp sword that he would instantly remove from its sheath, revealing the dangerous shiny tip, from which a crystalline drop of poison sprouted, the well-known poison of God. One of the most popular stories about the Archangel Samuel says that he was the supreme chief of the fifth heaven, where he ruled over two million celestial angels, who were known as Grigori. During the creation of humanity, like many of the flamboyant divine angels, Samuel was annoyed with the dispositions of God, because God, when creating from dust the first man on earth, said that everyone, including Samuel, should worship Adam. God gave the announcement to all the orders of angels, saying that Adam would soon be like one of them, and as soon as he gave Adam knowledge, he was to be worshipped as a god. To Samuel such words were sharp daggers, for he did not understand how a mere mortal man, formed of clay, would achieve something that even he did not possess. Samuel considered himself to be of a superior race, so to worship an inferior being was truly madness. As time passed, God witnessed the resentful behavior of Samuel, and noticed the influence he had on the angels under his command, so he sent him to defeat the demon that lived on Mars, in order to distract him. However, Samuel did not obey God's designs, because with the great inconformity and feeling of injustice that was within him, he was not able to serve God. Thus, he told the angels in his charge that what God did was not worthy, and that giving so much relevance to an inferior being was not pleasing. In addition, he said that if God continued giving divine power to Adam then he would disobey each of the divine orders because he could not worship an inferior being, since Adam was created with just clay while Samuel was already a perfect and eternal being. He ended this by saying, May he worship me. Upon hearing Samuel's words full of jealousy, the archangel Michael told him that he should follow God's designs, since he is the only powerful being capable of ending creation itself. He also warned him to beware of God's wrath, for it had no pity or mercy. Samuel immediately laughed at this, and told Michael that he would look for a star in the sky and make it his throne, consecrating himself as a being who was equal or more powerful than the Most High. The Archangel Michael could not control his anger and threw Samuel down from above, sending him straight to earth, for he had offended the name of God, for no one should consider himself superior to the Creator. Soon after, God ordered the heavenly hosts to descend to earth to worship Adam as God himself, and so Samuel rebelled against God and told him, We will never worship someone so inferior, when we have been created from the great splendor of your glory. Who then deserves to be worshipped? Put us to the test and we will prove to you that this being of clay does not deserve your glory, said Samuel. Thus, with great serenity, God said to him, Although you do not believe it, this being of dust surpasses them, because the knowledge has been given to him. Samuel was very angry and his resentment towards God was growing. God told him that to test him and Adam, they should say the names of the beasts that originated on earth, and whoever did so would be worthy of reverence, for his wisdom will be greater. Already in Eden, Adam saw a radiant light, approaching little by little and behind it a much more resplendent light, they were Samuel and God, who by Samuel's whim came to test his wisdom. Adam, like God himself, bowed to Samuel, and God told him to stand up, for he was not the Creator. Then in front of both, God said that they should say the name he had given to the animals, 
he ordered Samuel to gather the animals and put them in line, and so it began, he challenged Samuel against God. With the animals already arranged, God asked both of them who would be the first to name the beasts, and Samuel answered him saying, I will be the first, because I am older and therefore much wiser. God approved the request and addressed Samuel saying, If you succeed in naming all the animals, Adam will revere your wisdom, but if you do not succeed and he does, you will have to revere his. So, the jealous angel started, in front of him, there were some oxen, and God asked him, What are their names? Samuel changed his expression of confidence to one of nervousness, for he could not remember the name of the animal, and so he went to each of the following animals in the long line that he had ordered. When he had finished, God told him, Now it is Adam's turn, and now you will understand why he is like us. Inside Samuel's being, he felt a great fury that led him to think of ungodly acts against his Creator, however, at that moment he kept quiet and clenched his fist, clenching his painful feelings of anger. So God called Adam to stand in front of the row of beasts and said to him, Well Adam, open your lips and tell me the name of this animal. And so instantly, Adam answered him saying that is an ox, Samuel was perplexed, for it was the first beast and he knew its name. In this way Adam continued naming all the animals in the line and one by one all his answers were correct, with God nodding in approval of each answer Adam gave. The angel Samuel, for his part, writhed in anger and helplessness, because he realized that God had given him the understanding of things, and he began to break down in tears. God saw him and immediately said to him, Do you weep? And so from the ground Samuel arose in great anger, and said to him, You have given understanding to a creature formed from dust, and you do not want me to weep? Then God looked at him with anger and said to him, Evil angel, you have been created for my glory, and in this way you behave with your God. Just as you have been amazed at the wisdom of Adam, I want you to know that he is going to foresee the birth of his descendants and will be the one who will give the name to each of them, until the end of time. Already in the heavens, God gathered the angels who revealed themselves together with Samuel, and expelled them from the kingdom of the heavens, throwing them to the earth. In the end Samuel was pushed away with the wrath of God and due to his desire to not be exiled, he clung to the wings of the archangel Michael, who was in front of him witnessing the divine punishment. God, upon seeing the hand scratching Michael's wings, detached him with a single finger and threw him with more force, and ended up telling him, On earth you are condemned to suffer and you will never return to heaven, not even to raise your eyes. As time went by, God continued with the creation and each day that passed he gave a ray of wisdom to Adam and his wife. According to the myth and stories, it is said that when Adam was created from clay, it was done together with a woman, and this woman's name was Lilith. On earth, Samuel was looking for a way to challenge the Creator and above all to destroy what he had formed. He went to Eden every day, and observed with great stealth every action of Lilith and Adam, and he always noticed something strange about the woman, because she was not intimidated by God. From that moment on, Samuel felt attracted to the beautiful Lilith, who watched the dark angel from afar. One day, God came down to Eden and told Lilith that she had to be faithful to Adam, and above all she had to obey every order he gave her, as well as comply with all the requirements he imposed. However, Lilith considered what God said a great outrage, because she considered that both had been created from the same clay, at the same time, and that both had the same rights and relevance. God did not like the way Lilith expressed her thoughts and told her, Woman, you must understand that you are inferior to man. For Lilith, the crude words that God said, awakened in her a horrendous and uncontrolled anger, which made her reveal herself. So God told her that she had only two options, the first was to submit to her husband Adam, and the second was to be expelled from the Garden of Eden forever. Lilith did not care much about the garden and left, heading to the shores of the Red Sea where she settled. Soon after, God decided to create a new woman for Adam, because he was constantly complaining about his loneliness, so from Adam's own being, he took a rib and some mud and gave birth to a new companion, Eve. From the darkness Samuel observed everything that happened until one day, Lilith and Samuel fell in love with each other and became spouses, who begot thousands of demon children with which they opened the way to darkness, creating hell, a kingdom as powerful as the kingdom of heaven itself. 
God, seeing that Lilith and Samuel, plagued the earth with their children of dark spirits, ordered to kill 100 children every day for a long time, however, Lilith and Samuel continued to have many children. According to the story, it is said that God had the dark angel castrated to prevent any future reproduction. It is also said that when Lilith saw her husband castrated, she left him forever. Although in other versions it is said that both ruled the darkness for thousands of years with the aim of overthrowing God from his throne. According to Hebrew beliefs, it is said that Samuel is simultaneously the prince of all angels and the great chief of all demons, and that this powerful angel had power over the heavens, the sciences, and the planets. It is also said that Samuel proposed to create another world, in order to take the position of creator, which would make him a demiurge, with Samuel being his third name. For the Hebrews it is said that it was the archangel Samuel who planted the tree of wisdom in the Garden of Eden because he wanted Adam to break God's laws, and wanted him to sin at any cost. According to the myth, it is said that Samuel tempted Eve to eat the fruit, and thus lead Adam to commit the same sin, with the serpent being the evil disguise of Samuel. According to other stories, Samuel is said to have seduced Eve to make her fall into sin, and as soon as he succeeded in making her fall into temptation, they had a son whom Eve raised with Adam and named him Cain. In several stories it is said that Samuel was the prince of darkness, and that right at creation he opposed God and his design. God had said that he would create a world from light and clarity, and Samuel would have told him to also include darkness and darkness in his creation, because it was the most sensible thing to do as a prince. For God, Samuel's words conveyed arrogance and contempt, so he told him from his throne to be careful, for he was capable of destroying him with a single shout. Samuel did not heed the words of God and he intervened in the creation, producing darkness, generating darkness, and the abyss. Seeing the disobedience of Samuel, God, gave a heavenly cry that threw him from above, exiling him and all the angels in his charge and locked them in a dungeon where they still remained suffering, with emaciated faces and sealed lips for all eternity. According to the rabbis, Samuel is also considered as the angel of death and is represented as a dark being with a beautiful figure, covered by a black robe from head to toe. He is also depicted carrying a powerful sword and a divine bow with fiery arrows. It is said that after the exile of Samuel and the other fallen angels, Samuel's title of Grigori was removed and he instead began to be referred to as Satan, the one who is against God, also known as the Prince of Darkness.